My name is Dr. DePappas. I'm an interventional radiologist, and today we're going to talk about uterine fibroids. Why should you care about uterine fibroids? Because by the age of 50, one in three women is going to be diagnosed with uterine fibroids, and they can cause a lot of negative symptoms like pelvic pain, heavy menstrual bleeding, and difficulty controlling urination. Before we jump in, if you have any questions as we're going through this information, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook or go to our website and set up a free phone consultation. So what is a uterine fibroid? Let's start with the basics. A uterine fibroid is a benign tumor within the uterus. When we say benign, that means that it's not cancerous. But even though they're not cancerous, they can get really, really big, bigger than this potato right here. You can imagine if this was in your belly, it can push on other structures that are very close to the uterus. So how the heck do you know if you have a uterine fibroid? Most of the time, if women have a large enough uterine fibroid to be noticed, they've probably gone to their gynecologist with symptoms such as pelvic pain, heavy menstrual bleeding, or difficulty with urinary control. At the gynecologist office during a physical exam, frequently they'll be able to feel the uterine fibroid through a physical exam. Once there's a suspicion that a uterine fibroid may be present, the diagnosis is cinched or locked in with either a pelvic ultrasound or a pelvic MRI. So if you've been diagnosed with a uterine fibroid, when should you get it taken care of? If a uterine fibroid is seen on an ultrasound or an MRI, let's say, and you're not having any symptoms, it was just noted incidentally, there's no reason to do anything about the fibroid because there's such a low chance of the fibroid being cancerous. However, many women have symptoms related to the overall size of the fibroid that is present. Uterine fibroids get treated when you are symptomatic from the fibroid. So what does symptomatic mean? There are basically three categories of symptoms with uterine fibroids. You have menstrual symptoms, symptoms called bulk symptoms, and then urinary symptoms. Menstrual symptoms related to fibroids are heavy menstrual bleeding, bleeding out of proportion to what you're typically used to. That is a very classic presentation for fibroids. The second set of symptoms is bulk symptoms. This is related to the fibroid pressing on adjacent structures. Bulk symptoms are pelvic pain, pelvic fullness, and an overall sense of pelvic bloating. Those three symptoms are very commonly related to fibroids. The last set of symptoms related to fibroids is urinary symptoms. This is specifically when the fibroid uterus presses against the bladder, which is right next to where the uterus is. This can cause women to have a sense of urinary urgency or leaking. Treatments for uterine fibroids. Let's run through them real quick. One, you can do nothing. Two, there's medications that can be used to manage the symptoms of fibroids. Three, there's surgical options like hysterectomy or complete removal of the uterus, or myomectomy, which is surgically cutting out of the fibroids. And four, this is the one you may not have heard of before, there is a minimally invasive treatment called uterine fibroid embolization that can be used to treat the fibroids and their symptoms. Medications work by regulating the amount of hormone within a woman's body. Fibroids normally grow related to the amount of estrogen and progesterone that's on board. The pros of medications are they're simple to take and there's no procedure that's required. It's the most minimally invasive option there is. Surgery for fibroids. You've probably already heard of a hysterectomy or complete removal of the uterus. If you remove the uterus, then there are no more fibroids present. So the major pro of a hysterectomy is the fibroids are by definition gone. The major benefit of a hysterectomy is it's a one-time treatment. The cons of hysterectomy are that it is a major surgery. Hysterectomy normally requires a three to five day hospital admission, and it normally takes a woman six to eight weeks to return back to normal function. The other issue with hysterectomy is some women do not want to lose their uterus. And there have been studies that have shown women after hysterectomy have a higher incidence of depression. And obviously, if you're someone that's young and looking to have children, this totally takes hysterectomy off of the treatment algorithm. The other surgical option for uterine fibroids is myomectomy. That is where the fibroid is cut out of the uterus, but the majority of the uterus is left behind. The benefit of myomectomy is that if you do want to get pregnant in the future, 
Normally, you're able to do that after a myomectomy. There are a couple cons of myomectomy. Number one, normally during a myomectomy, you can only remove one to three uterine fibroids. And most women that are symptomatic have six to seven fibroids present at the time of their symptoms. The other major con of myomectomy is that it is still a surgical procedure and usually requires a hospital stay and a couple of months of recuperation afterwards. Lastly, let's talk about the minimally invasive procedure called uterine fibroid embolization or UFI. Before we go into the procedural details, it helps to understand how a fibroid grows. Going back to our example, the potato that's pretending to be a fibroid, fibroids require blood supply. Small arteries feed the uterine fibroid in order for the fibroid to grow. During the UFI procedure, small particles or beads are injected into the arteries to cut off the blood supply to all of the fibroids that are present. After the blood supply to a fibroid has been removed, it takes about one to three months for the fibroid to significantly shrink or completely go away. The pros of uterine fibroid embolization are that it is a minimally invasive same day outpatient procedure. The procedure itself takes about 90 minutes. After the procedure, you go home the same day. Women generally after uterine fibroid embolization are back to work within five days. When you compare that to our surgical alternatives, we're normally talking about six to eight weeks of recovery. The other benefit of uterine fibroid embolization is that you treat all of the fibroids rather than spot treating the uterus like with myomectomy. When comparing uterine fibroid embolization with myomectomy, they are both equally effective at reducing symptoms related to fibroids, greater than 90% effective. However, with fibroid embolization, you eliminate all of the negatives of having to undergo a surgical procedure. The one potential benefit of myomectomy over uterine fibroid embolization is that there is low level data, a few papers that show it may be slightly easier to become pregnant after myomectomy when compared to uterine fibroid embolization. However, to clarify, it is well established that most women can get pregnant after both myomectomy and uterine fibroid embolization. Weighing all the treatment options, you may be wondering, why have I not heard of uterine fibroid embolization? Generally, the person that diagnoses uterine fibroids, a gynecologist, does not perform uterine fibroid embolization. If you're interested in uterine fibroid embolization, you need to find an interventional radiologist. Additionally, if you want answers right now, ask us at Pain Theory. We have interventional radiologists that are happy to answer your questions about fibroid embolization. The age old question, what about insurance coverage? You'll be happy to know that all of the procedures we talked about today are covered by all major private insurers, Medicaid and Medicare. To learn more about uterine fibroid embolization, click below to access our comprehensive guide on fibroids and fibroid embolization and enjoy a free phone consultation with a pain theory care coordinator.